I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. However, having said that, inevitably, I have to say that we can probably all agree that 2020 has been the sort of year we'd all just, for so many reasons, like to forget. But what we cannot forget is the impact that uh, the COVID-19 virus has had on all those young people that we support. We've all probably experienced a degree of isolation and loneliness during these challenging times and recognise firsthand how difficult this can be. Unfortunately for the young people on our programmes, isolation and loneliness are everyday feelings. The COVID-19 pandemic has left them unable to access the charity's vital programmes, robbing them of the ability to meet new friends, socially engage or develop a wide range of personal skills. For the sake of the thousands of disadvantaged and disabled young people across the UK that we support, please help us to continue our work by making a donation to the Lord's Taverners. Our work has never been more vital. Thank you. Good evening to you all, wherever you may be. My name is Lorenzo, and I'm the vicar of this church of St. Luke in the heart of South London between Clapham Common and Wandsworth Common. I would like to welcome you to the Lord Taverner's carol concert with the stars. Please join with us in singing familiar carols, in listening to Roderick Williams and members of the Holt Singers accompanied by Derek Carden and conducted by Nicholas Cleobury. And enjoy readings by Robert Powell, Ebony Rainford Brent, Stephen Fry, and Lord's Taverners President, David Gower. The Lord Taverners is the UK's leading youth cricket and disability sports charity. It breaks down barriers and empowers disadvantaged and disabled young people to fulfill their potential and build life skills. Its programmes support some of the most marginalised and at-risk young people in the UK, using sport and recreation 
to build links between communities and encouraging groups to play sport together. The Lord's Taverners would like to thank our official carol concert with the Stars event partner, Viking, and Roger and Maggie Smith for their sponsorship of tonight's concert. I would also like to thank all those who have been involved in singing, reading, and making this program, all of whom have donated their time to support the charity. As we celebrate the birth of our Saviour Christ in this strangest of years, let us recall the words of St. Luke. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn.
The second epistle from Joseph to the Corinthians. Dear Corinthians, I acknowledge safe receipt of your epistle in response to my epistle, commonly known for reasons that escape me as the first epistle to the Corinthians, concerning the recent sojourn with my wife Mary in Bethlehem, or, as your brochure puts it, the city of David. For a travel company of repute, both Mary and I find your explanations of the accommodation arrangements far from satisfactory. If we have to make the journey again, which I hope we do not in the light of what occurred once we were there, it will most certainly not be with Corinthians 18 to 30 holidays. I offer the following response to your explanations. One, I have looked again at your brochure. I do not agree that the description of the inn includes the outhouses. The words travellers with cattle can expect the use of the stables surely refers to the cattle, not the guests. You may say that there are many worse off than ourselves. Unfortunately, they all seem to have been booked with your company. Two, you will have to take it from me that Mary giving birth to the Son of God was totally unexpected. And I can assure you that had I known he was on the way, I would have given you the opportunity of bringing in your PR people. Three. I agree with your proposition that from every point of view, the story has more appeal, set as it is in a stable rather than in a twin-bedded room with half board that we had booked. I also agree that it was much more convenient for the angel to make his way across the yard and into the stable rather than going through the residence lounge. Of course, I accept that the presence of the entire heavenly host praising God along the corridor on the second floor of the inn might have resulted in complaints from your other guests. But that does not address my main complaint. My wife Mary has little in common with shepherds. It was bad enough having to cope with livestock in the stable, but having to face a deputation of local sheep farmers who claimed they were tired of abiding in their fields at night was not our idea of local colour. Your decision to include them as an optional extra in next year's brochure does not impress us. Four. I know you are denying you had anything to do with the couriers who arrived from the East bearing gifts, but I still maintain that I had seen one of them in your office when I booked the trip. I do not wish to appear ungrateful, but at a time when I was struggling with a newly born child, an exhausted wife, 
a group of fanatical shepherds, assorted livestock, an angel explaining that my son was the everlasting father and the entire heavenly host, the arrival of three Corinthian holiday representatives in fancy dress did little to help. And by the way, they could have left something a little more practical. Yours very truly, Joseph. If I was attending these wicked sessions, I would be sitting at home and doing nothing right now, or I'd be on the streets. We are using cricket as a tool for social inclusion. I used to see the same kids standing about in the streets. Now where do I see them? I see them play cricket. For our kids to see that actually they can be independent, they can get outside the school gates. Without the minibus, we can't do that. Disability sport is amazing at bringing people together. It almost makes you grateful that you've got the disability. If somebody had said to me two years ago, you will see Riley playing cricket, I have today. Well, I didn't think this would ever happen, but now it is happening. I'm getting a chance to move forward. All we could see was what he couldn't do, whereas now we're beginning to see what he can do. It gives everything. It means everything.
The First Christmas by Marion Swinger. It never snows at Christmas in that dry and dusty land. Instead of freezing blizzards, there are palms and drifting sands. And years ago, a stable and most unusual star and three wise men who followed it by camel, not by car. While sleepy on the quiet hills, a shepherd gave cry. He'd seen a crowd of angels in the silent starlit sky. In the stable, ox and ass stood very still and calm and gazed upon the baby, safe and snug in Mary's arms. And Joseph, lost in shadows, face lit by an oil lamp's glow, stood wondering that first Christmas 2,000 years ago.
The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey, the ways deep and the weather sharp and the very dead of winter, and the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on the slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men, cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women, and the night fires going out, and the lack of shelters, and the cities hostile, and the towns unfriendly, and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill beating the darkness and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, and so we continued, and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon finding the place, it was, you might say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago. I remember and I would do it again, but set down, set down this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We returned to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death.
This is a recipe for some Christmas cheer. In fact, it's a Christmas fruitcake recipe. First of all, the ingredients, always important. They are one cup of water, one cup of sugar, four large eggs, three cups of dried fruit, one tablespoon of baking powder, one cup of brown sugar, lemon juice and nuts, and one full bottle of your favorite whiskey. And I have here a glass of that favorite whiskey. Right, the cooking method goes like this. One, sample the whiskey to check the quality. Yep. <coughs> ah, take out a large bowl. Check the whiskey again to be sure that it is of the highest quality. Yeah. Pour one little cup and drink. Repeat. Turn on the electric mixer. Beat one cup of butter in a large fluffy bowl. Add one tablespoon of sugar and beat again. Make sure the whiskey is still okay. Cry, cry another cup. Turn off the mixer. Break two gegs and add to the bowl and chuck in the cup of dried fruit. Mix on the burner. If, if the fried fruit gets stuck in the beaters, pry it loose with a screwdriver. Sample the whiskey to check for toxicity. <coughs> Next, <laughs> sift two cups of salt or something. Who cares? Check the whiskey. Now sift the lemon juice and strain your nuts. Add one tablespoon of sugar or something, whatever you can find. Grease the oven, turn on the cake tin to 350 degrees. Don't forget to beat off the turner, throw the bowl out the window. Check the whiskey again. Go to bed. Just before we reached the end of the 2020 Lord's Taverners Christmas Concert with the Stars in this very unusual year, I would like to thank you for watching and listening wherever you may be. 
as chairman of the Lord's Taverners Music Committee, I would like to thank all those who have taken part. Our readers, Ebony Rainford Brent, Stephen Fry, Robert Powell, and the Lord's Taverners President, David Gower. Our soloist, Roderick Williams, the members and friends of the Hulse Singers, conducted by Nicholas Clearbury, and our organist, Derek Carden. A special thank you, too, to the production team, Edward Armitage, John Frederick Hudson, and Derek Morgan. The socially distant filming was able to take place on the day before England's second lockdown in the beautiful church of St Luke Battersea in South London. And our thanks also go to the vicar, Reverend Lorenzo, and the staff there. Without the support of our event partner, Viking, and our sponsors of many years, Maggie and Roger Smith, this concert would not have been possible. And so huge thanks go to them too. As David Gower has said, please give generously this Christmas time to the Lord's Taverners to support their wonderful work for children with disability and disadvantage. You can donate now by going to the Lord's Taverners website, www lordstaverners.org And so before you join us in our final carol, I would like to wish you a very happy Christmas and a prosperous and fulfilling new year.
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.